Well, hello, and thanks for tuning in for another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. Today, we're going to explore equine internal parasites. So if you own a horse or horses, I'm sure you've heard about the dangers of gastrointestinal parasites. If you're boarding your horse, perhaps you're not the one who has to carry out the deworming schedule for your horse, but if your horse is in your backyard, that falls on you. I know it can be a little bit confusing and sometimes a lot of overwhelming to understand what the impact is of internal parasites. This is one of the most common equine diseases. Most often you have questions like, when do I worm my horse? How often do I worm my horse? Well, which wormers affect what parasites? So in this short video, we're going to explore all the different equine internal parasites and also do a rundown of what warmer you use at what time. We'll also investigate fecal testing for parasites and how that's done. And so you may be wondering, is there a way to manage parasites? There are, and there's about three steps to doing that. Manage your pastures. You need to decrease the amount of eggs and larvae from the pasture, and that is going to require you to remove and dispose of horse poop from your pastures. It's time consuming. It's not always the easiest option, but by doing so at least twice a week, you're going to be effective in reducing the population of eggs and larvae. Also, be aware that mowing and harrowing your pastures exposes the larvae to predators and the elements and helps to decrease the population. So if you can get out in your pastures and mow them down, it's going to help in a big way. And it's also good for your pastures. If you've got a fairly large amount of pasture or land, and I'm saying like four acres and above, even two acres and above, you need to rotate your pasture. So you give them a day on one pasture, close them off of that. The next day they go to another pasture. They're, they recommend that you rest your pastures for six months. We can't do that. I have eight acres. It doesn't work that way. But on the eight acres, I have six enclosures. And I only have four horses. I also keep a hay hut for them that's filled with hay 24 seven so that they're not just constantly grazing pasture. They do come in and they'll eat from the hay hut, especially if the bugs are nasty. So the other way that you can manage your worms is to do fecal egg counts, and that's going to help you diagnose parasites as well as determine the effectiveness of your worming program. Worm your horse. Giving your horse a dewormer is going to help remove the adult worms from the intestine, and it's also going to reduce the chance of reinfection by decreasing the number of ineffective larvae in the feces and, in turn, the pastures. So, fecal count. A fecal egg count is going to measure the number of strongyle eggs your horse is passing in each gram of his manure. When you send a sample to your vet or independent lab, you're going to get back a number like 50 eggs per gram or 500 eggs per gram. And this is called a quantitative test. The fecal count test for your horse and when you should do it. This test measures the presence of small strongyles, ascarids, and also roundworms. Yes, that's disgusting. We'll talk about more about disgusting worms a little bit later. All right, so the fecal egg count test, the FEC, is designed to detect specific types of parasites that your horse has. It won't catch everything, as some worms, like the pinworm, won't release eggs inside your horse, so they will usually never show up in manure. The fecal count is done for horses and measures the load of the small strongyles and ascarids. Okay, you ask, what the H-E double hockey sticks are small strongyles and ascarids? 
Well, the small strong guiles are very nasty parasites that your horse can house in his intestine. They're picked up when your horse is grazing. In the pasture, the small strong guile eggs that are left by a horse's manure will then turn to larvae. Your horse eats it, the larvae migrate to the large intestine and then to the cecum. And while there, the small strong guiles are going to burrow into the intestinal wall and form their own cysts, sort of, this is gross, sort of like a worm nest. Sometimes they're there for months and even years. And when all the stars align, these ins insisted larvae will burst out and start to transform into their final larval stage in your horse's gut. Ew. They'll start to lay eggs. They're going to be passed with your horse's manure and go back into the pasture. So now you understand why we have to rotate our wormers and why we have to deworm. And the main problem with these small strong aisle is that dewormers are unlikely to penetrate the cyst to kill the larvae. Also, if the larvae all break out at once, which can happen, your horse can develop dangerous colitis, diarrhea, or colic. You know, the stuff that's going to cost you a small fortune with the vet. Okay, so when should you perform the fecal egg count test? Well, there's two things to consider about timing the fecal egg count. You should ask yourself, are you going to be performing the egg count reduction test and what season is it? This measures the effectiveness of your dewormer and can let you know if your horse needs another brand, if possible. This is also an indication of the parasite's resistance to modern dewormers. One easy way to do the test is to use a service like zeroeggcount.com, and I'll put that in the description below. These mail-in kits are absolutely affordable and accurate. Doing your own equine parasite testing allows you and your vet to diagnose the extent of your horse's internal parasitic infection or burden before you deworm. That way, you know which parasites you are treating for. And you're probably wondering what time of the year you should run your fecal egg count testing. Well, you got to remember that parasites will reproduce and are most plentiful when the weather warms up, but before it gets too hot, which means spring and early summer. And since that's when parasite season begins, spring and early summer are also one of the best times to test. Parasites tend to slow or stop reproduction as the weather turns colder. Therefore, a fall fecal egg count test result will provide you with your horse's parasite burden going into winter and allows you to deworm accordingly for the remainder of the year. So how hard is the fecal egg count test to run? It's not hard at all. It's actually quite easy. However, Without wearing gloves, you might find it a little more difficult and gross. Test kits require a collection of a fecal ball. You don't need to mail in the whole pile of poop, just a ball. You'll need to mail it as a super fresh sample with a coolant in the box so you're not cooking it while it's in transit. And all the supplies you need are included in your zero egg count kit along with your directions. Read them before you start actually performing the test. When you do a follow-up test, you can tell if your dewormer is working. You'll look at the fecal egg count reduction and the protocol and you'll follow up on your post-treatment. And after the initial fecal egg count, deworm according to your vet's plan and perform another egg count test two to two weeks later, just to measure the effectiveness of your dewormer. It's that simple, folks. And at least you are not building resistant larvae or parasites because you're deworming when you really don't need it. Okay, so let's talk about what wormers and when. So for the months of March and April, you will be using a product called Safeguard. That's a Pyrentel horse warmer. It's an oral paste and it removes and controls mature infections of long strong aisles, small strong aisles, pinworms, and large roundworms in horses and ponies. 
It contains 43.9% of pyrental pomade for horses. Contents of each syringe will treat up to 1,200 pounds of body weight. And so for the months of May, June, you'll be using Zymectrin Gold Paste. It is the first equine dewormer licensed in the U.S. for the control of equine tapeworms. Zymectrin Gold combines Ivermectin and Praziquantel to provide the broadest spectrum of parasite control available for your equine. It's proven to have a wide margin of safety and to be highly effective for controlling tapeworms in horses. Zymectrin Gold can be used in horses two months of age and older. However, testing has not been done in breeding mares or breeding stallions. And I have heard that this is poisonous to dogs, so make sure when you're using it, if you drop any on the ground, that you clean it up and dispose of it. So now we're in July and August, and we're going to use Strongid Paste Dewormer. That's your Pyrental Pomme again. It controls large and small strong aisles, pinworms, roundworms. It is safe for use in foals, pregnant mares, and breeding stallions. And each 20 mil syringe will worm 1,200 pounds. Okay, so in September, October, you're going to go back to the safeguard, and that's your Pyrental horse dewormer. Again, oral paste, and it's going to remove and control large strong aisles, mature infections of large strong aisles, small strong aisles, pinworms, and large roundworms. So some people, myself included, I have used diatomaceous earth. You can use it in your feed. You can use it for fly control. It creates a dry environment that inhibits flies from breeding. It's a natural dewormer. And it works in a few ways to eliminate internal parasites. How that works is it scratches the protective coating of the parasite, which makes the parasite dehydrate. Diatomaceous earth can also be used to treat your barn cats and dogs as it helps control fleas and ticks. The only thing you want to be aware of is if you're using the fly predators, it will kill your fly predators so that's where i had to stop i used diatomaceous earth during the winter but then stopped in early spring because um, i am releasing spalding lab fly predators and if you're interested in getting bonus packs of spalding lab fly predators just mention my name kimber lee l-e-y and the backyard horse enthusiast when you're ordering and they will give you bonus packs Thank you.